All right, welcome back, kiddos. Today we're going to talk about an international system of units. We call it the SI system. Scientists need to report data that can be reproduced by other scientists. Thus, there's a need for standard units of measurement. So we're all using the same unit to measure a certain quantity. Um, in 1960, an international committee of scientists met to update the existing metric system. The revised international unit system is called the System International de United, which is abbreviated simply SI for System International. And there are seven base units to measure certain quantities. So if I want to measure time, the unit I would use is not the hour, um, it's not... Um, it's not a week, it's not a month, it's, it's a second. The unit we would use to measure length is not a foot. It's not a yard, it's not a mile, it's a meter. The unit to measure mass is not a pound, it's the kilogram. The unit to measure temperature is not Fahrenheit, like we are used to here in the United States. It's not Celsius, like many other countries are used to. It's the Kelvin temperature scale, and we'll talk more about that later in the year. If we measure the amount of a substance, we use the unit called mole. Um, we'll talk more about that again, in fact, very shortly, just a couple videos from now, we introduce the mole concept to you, and we use that throughout the year to determine the amount of a particular substance. Electric current is the ampere, and luminous intensity, which we don't use at all, is the candela. Now, to better describe the range of possible measurements, scientists add prefixes to these base units. These prefixes are based on powers of 10. So, for instance, the prefix kilo means a thousand. So, an object that has a mass of 5,000 grams could be written as simply 5 kilograms. It means the same thing. 5,000 grams is the same as 5 kilograms. Another example would be milli. The prefix milli means a thousandth with a th at the end. So an object with a length of 0 0.00035 meters can be written as 0.35 millimeters or 0.35 thousandths of a meter. Now, the following is a list of SI prefixes. This list from mega to nano needs to be memorized. You need to know what these prefixes mean. So, if I were to use the prefix mega, for instance, megagram, I would write that as a symbolize it with the capital letter M and a small letter G after that for megagram, and that would mean a million grams. Another way to write a million is simply 10 to the 6th. Kilo is abbreviated by the capital letter K, and that means a thousand. So if I had a kilo liter, I would have a thousand liters. And 10 to the 3rd is the power of 10. That's equivalent to a thousand. Um, deci is abbreviated by the small letter D, and that is 0.1, or a tenth. So if I had a decimeter, I would have a tenth of a meter. And the numerical equivalent for that as a power of 10 is 10 to the negative first. Centi, you're probably familiar with centi, like centigram, is a hundredth of a gram. That's abbreviated with the lowercase c. Milli, as we talked about just a few minutes ago, is abbreviated with the small uh, letter M, or lowercase m, and that's a thousandth. Micro is a millionth, and that's abbreviated with the Greek letter mu. Notice it sort of kind of looks like a u, but it's the Greek letter mu. And nano, the last one that you folks have to memorize, is abbreviated with the small letter n, and the numerical equivalent of that is a billionth, or 10 to the negative ninth. So, let's take a look at our next page here, and let's practice a few of these. So, what was the name for a tenth of a meter? Do you remember? Let's look. A tenth of a meter. Let's see. A tenth. That was deci, wasn't it? So, let's go back. So, we're going to write deci. And if we're going to measure length, it would be a decimeter. All right. 
So let's say we formed a cube, a cubic box with this unit as its edge. What would be the volume of that box? Remember, volume is the length, width, and height, or if it's a cubic box, it would be the length cubed. So let's try to draw a picture of that, okay? Um, we'll draw one decimeter tall and one decimeter wide. And let's finish off that square and let's make it one decimeter deep. Okay, let's finish this off now. Yeah, I'm not that bad at drawing cubes. Okay, so what would be the volume of that box? Well, remember, volume is length, width, and height. Or if it's a cube, it's the length cube. So 1 times 1 times 1 is 1 still. And the unit is decimeter times decimeter times decimeter. So kiddos, that's a decimeter cubed. So the volume of this box would be 1 cubic decimeters. Now, it just so happens that that volume is the same as something that is more familiar to us, even for those of us who live in non-metric parts of the world. So a cubic decimeter, it's about a decimeter tall, if you can imagine that, and a decimeter wide, so about that wide, and a decimeter deep. We call that a liter, and you've all heard of a liter. So a liter is the same as that cubic decimeter. Now, let's draw that same picture. That's a decimeter by a decimeter by a decimeter. But this time, let's use centimeters instead of decimeters. So let's see. If it's a decimeter tall, that would be the same as 10 centimeters tall. And a decimeter wide would be the same as 10 centimeters centimeters wide. So let's finish off that square. Okay, and let's make it a decimeter deep, which would be 10 centimeters deep. Now let's finish off my cube here. Oh, not a bad job that time. All right, so what's the volume of that cube, but this time in cubic centimeters? Well, we have 10 times 10 times 10, which is 1,000 and of course the unit is centimeter times centimeter times centimeter, which is centimeters cubed or a cubic centimeter. Sometimes we'll see that as a cc, but off, most times it'll be cm cubed, which simply means cubic centimeters. So the volume of this cube here is the same as the volume of this cube up here. However, this was measured in cubic decimeters. This one's measured in cubic centimeters. So what I'm trying to tell you is that a cubic decimeter is the same as 1,000 cubic centimeters, which we also said is the same as one liter. Now, one liter would have 1,000 thousandths of a liter in it, or 1,000 milliliters. So it turns out that a cubic centimeter is the same as a milliliter. And that is profound. One cubic centimeter is equal to one milliliter. So that means if I had a tiny little cube that was a centimeter tall by a centimeter wide and a centimeter deep, okay, that'd be one by one by one centimeter, that would be one cubic centimeter or one milliliter, a thousandth of a liter. So I'm going to put a rectangle around that. That is important. A cubic centimeter is the same as a milliliter. Now, we are going to do a bunch of these in class, and we are going to do several of these for practice on the video as well, and not just this video, many more to come. Now, we're going to do some conversions within the metric system. The process we're going to learn today is called dimensional analysis. Some teachers and textbooks call it the factor label method. It's the only way to be successful in this class as far as math is concerned. Even if you think you can do the problem easier or in your head, don't do it. Do it this way, this uh, dimensional analysis way, 
And then when you do get to more difficult problems, if you use this method, they really aren't that hard. So let me just show you quickly how to do it. We'll do a couple of examples. Okay? All right. Let's say I want to convert 4.75 grams into milligrams. So I go ahead and I start by writing down what I know. 4.75 grams. And I put the unit there. So don't forget the G. And we multiply by a conversion factor. A conversion factor has the same um, quantity on the top as it does on the bottom. The unit might be different, but the quantity is the same. For instance, I could say there are 60 seconds in a minute. That quantity of time is the same. There are just units. The units are just different. I could say, uh, let's see, there are four cups in a quart. Once again, the quantity is the same. Four cups is the same as one quart. The units are different. So let's do the same thing with grams and milligrams. Let's think about the conversion. Milli, if you remember, means a thousandth. Milli means one thousandth of a gram in this case. So if I had one gram, how many milligrams would be in that one gram? Well, if you said a thousand, you are correct. There are 1,000 milligrams in a gram. So this is my conversion factor. The quantity on the top is the same as the quantity on the bottom. If I had 1,000 milligrams or one gram, I'd have the same mass. Now, if you flip that around, it would be ridiculous. If you said in one milligram, one tiny little milligram, there are 1,000 grams, that doesn't make sense. But by saying there are 1,000 milligrams in a gram, is perfect. Now, since the number 1,000 is on the top of my conversion factor, I will multiply by it. If we ever end up with a number other than 1 on the bottom of my conversion factor, we would divide by it. So in this case, we're going to multiply. So we have 4.75 times 1,000. And so that equals 4,750 milligrams. We could also write that in scientific form is 4.75 times 10 to the one, two, 10 to the third milligrams. And either answer is completely acceptable. Okay? Let's try another one. Let's convert 89.43 liters into nanoliters. Now if you remember, nano is a really, really tiny number. It's 10 to the negative ninth. So, if I had one liter, how many of those nanoliters would be in it? Well, some students will say 10 to the negative ninth. No, that's not true. That's what nanoliter means, 10 to the negative ninth liters. It means a billionth. So, if I had one liter, how many nanoliters would be in it? Correct. If you said a billion, you are correct. So another way to write a billion is 10 to the ninth, just like that. So once again, I have a number on top, so I'm going to multiply by it. Now I'm going to pull out my calculator here and show you how you'd enter that on your calculator. We haven't used this in a little while, so let's plug it in, or let's plug these numbers in and see what we get. 89. 0.43, and we're going to multiply by 10 to the 9th. Now, the way we do that in our calculators, of course, we press multiply by, right? And then we go 10, and there's a, a little button up here that looks like a house rooftop. They call it the caret key. And we're going to press that, and that will allow me to put a power of 10 in there. And the power of 10 I want is 9. Okay, now we're going to press enter, because I have 8. 89.43 times 10 to the 9th. And let's see what my calculator says. It says 8.943 times 10 to the 10th. So that is my answer. I didn't leave myself enough space here, so I'm going to write it over here. 8.943 times 10 to the 10th nanoliters are the same as 89.43 liters. Okay, let's do another one here. Let's convert 3.44 times 10 to the 4th seconds into megaseconds. So once again, we begin by writing down what we know. 3.44 times 10 to the 4th, and I have seconds here. Okay, 
and multiply by a conversion factor. Now, the unit you want to get out of kiddos is always opposite of where it starts. So if it starts on top, which seconds does, I want to put it on the bottom. That way that unit will divide out. Your math teacher will say it cancels out. And the unit we want to get into then we're going to put opposite. So I want to put megaseconds on top. Now what does mega mean? Do you remember? You know, look back on the previous page. Mega means a million, 10 to the sixth. So let's see. In one megasecond, aren't there a million seconds? See the quantity on top, megasecond, and the quantity on the bottom, million seconds, is the same amount of time. Think about that. One million seconds is the same as a megasecond. That's a true conversion factor. Now this time, we need to divide by a million. So seconds cancel out, and we're going to take this number and divide it by 10 to the 6th. Whenever we have a number other than one on the bottom of my conversion factor, we're going to divide instead of multiply. So let's plug this in and see what we get. Um, 3.44 second EE to the 4th. So right now it says 3.44 times 10 to the 4th in my calculator, divided by 10, remember, caret key 6. So let's see what we get. 0 0.0344. So 0 0.0344 megaseconds. So 3.44 times 10 to the 4th seconds is the same as 0 0.0344 megaseconds. Okay? We'll practice more of these on the next video, and I think I have some homework help for you as well, and I think I'll even create another video to help you with this. So you'll get plenty of this uh, at the beginning of the year, and we use it throughout the year. So learn it now, please. All right? Talk to you later. Bye-bye.